fishing today. We're out on the, what they call the Midnight Lump, and it's out of Southwest Pass, Louisiana. And I tell you, it's where the Mississippi dumps out. It's 41 degree water right now, as you can it's see. It's a little chilly. We're in our winter attire right now because it was kind of chilly on the way out. And these yellow fins are going to give us a good workout today, what you're saying, right? We're, we're going to catch some good yellow fin. We've, we've caught some good black fin, and uh, the bonito are real thick. We just have to sort of get through them to, uh, to get to the big boys. We're, we've got set up on our spot now. We're with Captain Devlin Russell, and he's from out of Cypress Cove Marina? Cypress Cove Marina. And that's where we're staying. And I tell you what, it's one of the, one of the nicest places down here in Venice. They're back in business. They're going. And we're going to show you what happens right here on the Midnight Lump, right here in February. Here is what we're using for chum, is pogies, otherwise known as Bunker, Manhaden. They stink, they're very oily, and the tuna love them. So we're gonna cut these guys up and catch a fish. I'm here little fishy, actually big fishy. prize is not bad. It may not be a yellow. Uh, and there he is. You want to tail grab him? Yeah, I'll grab him by the tail. He's a nice little black. Got him? Yeah, got him. Ready? Rock and roll. Let's get him That's back in the black uh, fan. You say this was not going to get the typical Louisiana release, huh? I think we'll let this one go. <laughs> you know, the typical Louisiana release. Into it, the fish box? It's usually right into the fish box. And then right into the frying gonna, pan. Let me show him off out there. It's pretty fish. Pretty fish, beautiful fish. Blackfin tuna. Not the exact species we're going after, but as Devlin said, you can sure tell the difference between these guys and a bonita. Now, the way you want to let these guys go, if I, correct me if I'm wrong, just give them a good jolt in the water. Yeah, Blair, just throw them in the water. He All right, you got it. Straight down. Yeah, straight down. Throw them as hard as you can. One, two, three, say goodbye. And away he goes. Blair, when you throw them in like that, it gives them that little jolt and it gets him going right away. Well, that one definitely got a jolt of air through his gills in. So, what all that, and all that does is just make him come back alive real quick after you keep him out of the water. He gets back down there in the school and tells the other guys down there to come eat this chum. Well, uh, I guess it's time to take a break. We're gonna weed through some more of these bonitas and uh, hopefully be back on with a big yellow fin. Welcome back. We're still here sitting at the Midnight Lump right off of the Mississippi River. Nice and warm out here now. It was kind of gorgeous. Cool. Gorgeous. And we are going to try to attempt to get us another one of these tuna. Except this one we wanted to get the... Uh, we want about 160 pound yellowfin. Of the yellow kind. We're rigged up using pogey chunks. Simple way to do it. You toss out your pogey chunks and you just slowly, slowly feed it back to them. You don't want any tension on it. It's got to look like a normal part of the chum slick. It's got to look like a normal piece of cut pogey drifting back. Yeah, absolutely, which you <laughs> see in nature about 365 days a year. Yeah, and people say, oh, cut pogies. Nobody cuts pogies, but these, there's wahoo out there, and wahoo, you said, have the, it's only fish that have teeth like scissors. Yeah, they're scissor teeth. They, they go like that, and they, like, will, they will cut your line quick. Clip the baits, too, so it's not an unnatural look for these baits to be clipped in half. The toughest part about using a chum churn, though, is when a mako shark comes up and latches onto it, and he rolls over, he's got it in his mouth, and he looks at you with that one eye, <laughs> and you know he's trying to figure out how to eat you, too. Well, I'd like to see that. Well, I'll, I'll let you hold it when he shows up. <laughs> It'll be fun. This guy's still put up pretty good over there. Oh, here we go, here we go. Oh, boy. That's the man. That's a good one. 
Is that the man? That's the man. That's the man? Right, I think it up, get it off the side. So I think I'm going to need the bell. Yeah, oh yeah. It's one nice thing about the uh, fish on Midnight Love. Yeah. I think the fish can only dive a maximum of about 250 feet. They can't go down 3,500 like our summertime fish can. That's a good thing. You're going to be all right, Blair. I hate reeling them up for 3,000 feet. <laughs> <laughs> Well, how many folks we need to feed tonight, Devil? We need to feed about 15. About 15? We could use a little camp meat, that's for sure. That's a little yellow, ain't it? Uh, no, actually, that's, that's a big, big, big black fin. fin. Holy cow. That's a 28, 29-pound black fin there. Right up to you? It's a little yellow slack we need. Perfect. Got it. That's a nice one. That's a good one. I guess compared with that other blackie in there, we're gonna have a good meal tonight. I think that's dinner, my friend. <sighs> Sounds good to me. Sounds real good to me. Circle hook wherever it's supposed to be. Every time. Every time. Every time. Tell you what, brother. Y'all wanna catch some fish and have them pull on you? Come down and give these tuna a try. One thing about tuna that makes them so streamlined out there is if you see their fins here, they'll tuck back and there's a little bit of a ridge right here that just creates it's such a hydrodynamic fish and they use their little fins back here to steer with but when they fold these peck fins in like that it just makes them like a, a dart in the water absolute missiles well cam devlin when's them yellow fins gonna show up i don't know but this isn't a bad consolation right here let's these 25 pound black fin let's get him in the box and back in the water sounds, sounds like, like yellow fins sounds like dinner <laughs> Oh, what'd you say, Devlin? This is what? The, wor the worst kept secret in all of Venice? I don't think there's anybody out there that doesn't know about the midnight love down here in Venice. You know, when the fishing's this good, you're gonna get a lot of boats out here, and it's a beautiful day out here today. That sounds like something on there, huh? A big mullet. I hit it right away. All right, he's hit. Might need more drag on this thing to set that hook a little bit. Baby, baby set. Huh? Baby set. Boom. That's a good man. Trouble. So Devin, tell me, what, what makes these fish come up here in the wintertime like this? Because, I mean, you got the gulf. Everybody knows it's such good fishing off Venice, but you said there's boats here from Alabama, Fushan. You've got a huge upwelling here on the lump. Uh, the water comes from about 385 feet up to about 190, and the bait gets really disoriented. As you can see, we've got a lot of mullet around here, and they get a little silly with these currents hitting them from all different angles, and the fish just know they're gonna be here every year. So they're here to eat, and you can see they're eating. Yes, they are. <laughs> well, Devlin, you were wanting to know about these rods here earlier. The Wright McGill has just, this year, has started introducing their high-end line. And they call it their essential line. This is their first season with them? It's their first season with them. I'm impressed. And it's their first season with my signature series rod that, they, that they're doing. And this is all part of the essentials. And it's got the same technology that goes into these big rods as it goes into the little rods like the carbon Kevlar wrap, based from the butt of the rod, except for the stiff little offshores here, it goes up to the second guide. And you can see where it's bending up here, where the power in this rod is. Do I need to get a gap out for a potential gap shot here? Or? Uh, oh, no! He's just swimming at you. Huh? They swim at you right there. That one did. That's a good one. He ate a big mullet. Turbo-sized mullet at that. Well, I would like to take a couple of these yellowfins back home to Florida. My neighbors have yellowfin tuna radar. They know exactly when I'm coming home with fish. Oh, God. Blair, it looks like that uh, that leader's back out of the rod again. Yes, it is. Get a little second uh, second life in that fish. Uh. February, and I'm sweating. <laughs> The most frustrating thing on tuna fishing is when your leader goes in and out of your guide, in and out of your guide, in and out of your guide, and on a big fish. It'll do it 20 times. Oh, I've seen it happen you know, easily 20 times, and you just feel so helpless. There he goes, he's dumping again. What was that? Is he going to run again? Is he going to run again? I don't know if he's going to run again. i tell you what, this fish here has gotten to be a big fish. We're going to take a break. Y'all stay tuned. We'll be right back.
So this is big yellow fin too on the boat. Oh, God. Oh, finally got some leader. I think he's giving up now. Yeah. I believe that when I see it. He's definitely bigger than 60. These fish have a lot of heart. More heart than they do in the summertime? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, there he is. Tuna, tuna are red flesh fish, which means they're getting a lot of energy from their uh, from their flesh, from their muscle. Well, that's why you got to treat their meat like red meat, right? Oh, absolutely. You need to uh, you need to take care of it real well, ice it down real well, Ooh. bleed it. He's coming up. He's a nice one, do you think? About 90? Yeah, about 75. Gotcha. All right. That's a nice fish. That's Yo, wait do you see this bruiser. You ready for some slack? Let's get You ready? Yeah, yeah let's go. go ahead. Go ahead. How do you like that? That is a beauty. He's, uh, Woo. he's actually 85, uh, pushing 90. 90 pounds. Fish. Right there with that eagle claw, the guy's just wrapped yeah. in us. Right where it's supposed to be, right in the corner of the mouth. You see how his, uh, his sickles are actually starting to become little sickle fins here? Yeah. You know, in the summertime, they're about this long on those 60 to 80 pound fish. But once you start getting a little bit longer than that, you get some definition to them. Is when they're starting to approach 90 pounds, right. 100, you'll you'll really start noticing sickles. Even those right there tuck they're in for, for the streamline. And this, this goes straight down here. If you can see that, I don't know, but uh, their fin goes straight down, and they'll they'll pick these up. And you see how they move 180 degrees. That's yeah. how they steer themselves. Let's set him out here in the light real okay. good. All right, let's grab. You ready to see this guy in the sunlight? Oh, he's gonna do the tuna roll on us. <laughs> right there, brother. That's what you come to Venice, Louisiana for. That's a beautiful fish, too. Yes, really it is. Good. One of my favorite parts of the yellowfin tuna is this green line. In the summertime, it becomes a little bit more pronounced. They are just gorgeous fish. Yeah, the dolphin color green too. Absolutely. To them. They are beautiful. They are beautiful no matter what time of year you catch them. And check, you know, these have that, that little line there, too, and they just tuck back in there and make them hydrodynamic, just like those little black fins they're, we were they're talking. pure misses. And that's one thing that all tuna have. Absolutely. And they can all tuck them back like that. Even the bonita we've been catching have that. Yeah. So. Cool beans. Well, let's, let's get this guy into the ice and, and see if we can get another one. I think that means we get to eat him today. Yes, we get to eat this Fantastic. one. Fantastic. <laughs> Rig it right by Wright and Miguel. Well, I hope you all are enjoying the show as much as I'm enjoying catching those fish out there. We're going to show you what we're using out there today. It was a 5.6, real fast, heavy action rod, new from Wright McGill. And we got the 50 wides, brand new from Wright McGill also. And definitely doing the damage on those fish out there today. 50 pound test, about 50 feet worth of it too, just to give it a, a real good shock so it'll stretch out there and so the fish don't see it. We're using the fluorocarbon, disappears right in the water using an eight-aught laser shot sea circle hook, and um, it got the job done today. Every fish right in the corner of the mouth. And the bait we were using out there today, a predominant bait from the east coast, the west coast, uh, anywhere around you have salt water, you have these guys. Up in the north, they call them bunker. Over on the west coast and east coast, they call them pogies or menhaden, a real predominant bait fish here. Now, the, how we were rigging these guys, we were taking chunks of them, basically just staking them up, and the way you hide the hook in these things is, is I've always hooked them, but Devlin takes and pushes the hook inside the meat and hides the hook in there just like that. A great rig, easy, simple tuna rig. Now, if you come down to Cypress Cove Marina down here, you can book a charter right there with Devlin and go out and do the same thing you saw today. Stay in their condos here, real nice place to stay. That's your simple tuna rig, and that's the rig it right section for today. I hope you all enjoy the rest of the show because I got one of my first right here on Addictive Fishing. Another first. So stay tuned. Rig It Right by Wright and Miguel. sitting here waiting for these many species to come out. What are all the species that you can get out of here? We've caught plenty of bonita, blackfin, yellowfin, feline snapper. The other thing we catch a bunch of out here are wahoo. Uh, we probably won't catch one this way. Um, they'll bite right through the fluorocarbon. Yeah. Uh, but we do a lot of trolling for them with uh, with wire leaders and, and mirror lures and islanders uh, with ballyhoo. Cool, um, every now and then some uh, braid marauders. 
and they are they run big out here. Our average wahoo is about 60 pounds this time of year. Nice. So. Something I've never got was a big wahoo. We are tuna fishing now, not wahoo fishing. So we'll uh, we'll see how the tide turns here. Oh, what do you think that is? It's not a mingo, unless he just got eaten by a mako. We had a little lull there, and you know, got our chum slick really deep back up, and lo and behold, here we go again. Blair's got a mystery fish on a UFO. <laughs> it's fighting in circles. I mean, it, it could be a tuna, could be an AJ, could be a big shark. We do, do know for sure it's a fish. Yeah, it is a fish. It's a fish. It's fighting weird. It ain't fighting like a tuna. You know what a lot of people know that, or that don't know that y'all have here? What's that? Swordfish. Oh yeah. Swordfish. We've got we've got did, some swordfish I did here. A show, I didn't do a show. We did it. We did a swordfish day. What was that six months ago? It was in uh, September. September. If you want to come catch swordfish, give that one a call. What did we get? Seven, seven for ten that night seven by midnight. Ten. That's incredible. Absolutely incredible. And then a leader. Oh. oh, that's a good tuna. What is it? Real good tuna. Look at that tuna, my friend. Oh, that's a wahoo. 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 Oh, steady, steady, steady. Oh, Guys, this is a first. rarity. A wahoo on fluorocarbon. You got to keep him coming, though. Wahoo have scissor teeth, and that's a good 60-pound wahoo there. Why they call him wahoo? Woo! Wahoo! Woo! Woo! Baby! Look, can you see those teeth? You see how vicious those are? Unbelievable. You gotta be real careful when you bring him into the boat. You don't want to slap it down on anybody's foot or anything They'll like take that. Take it off right there instantly. Oh, yeah. Let's see if we can get this puppy up and get a good shot of him for everybody out there in TV land. I'll tell you what, you might want to get a uh, shot of where that hook is and all of that real quick. That is hooked absolutely perfectly. That's one of the reasons why we use circle hooks out here. You would never have landed this fish on a J hook. Yeah, what he was talking about catching it on mono. We're actually rigged for tuna right now with this rig right here with mono, and there's not even a nick on it. And what that circle hook does, just like you saw, right in the corner of the mouth where it stays away from them teeth, and those teeth are something else, I tell you. Oh, those, those are scissor teeth. They close on top of each other like a pair of scissors. Yeah. And we're, we're actually using a 65-pound Seagor Premier right there. It's really abrasion resistant, and you've got to have the best kind of tackle and expect that kind of result. You just don't catch many uh, wahoo on uh, fluoro or, uh, or mono. I'm gonna take this gaff out, just uh, watch his teeth. Go ahead, got him. And how big is he, you think? He is 65. He might be bigger than that. <laughs> yeah, he might be. Look, look how fat he is and how that's, long. For folks, that's my first wahoo, really. My, my, my last wahoo was about this big. I caught him on a little trout rod. We call those weehoo. 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 But this one here is a wahoo, baby. That's one of the best eaten fish in the world. In Hawaii, it's actually called ono, which translates directly into delicious. Well, let's get this guy up. I want to show him off to everybody out there. Look at that mouth on this sucker. Ugh. Come on over and have a seat on here. Hello, baby. You about pushed me in the water, though. They're the baddest mackerel that swims. They are the baddest mackerel that swims. And the best eating mackerel that swims. Absolutely. It's unbelievable. Fastest burst speed of any fish in the Gulf. Well, Devlin, once again, Hey, you guys ever want to come do a great charter? Probably the best fishing trip of your life. Come to Venice, Louisiana, and get a hold of Real Peace Charters right here. They're right out of Cypress Cove Marina. Great place to stay right there. And you just you jump down out of your room, jump in the boat, and go fishing and catch a bunch of big fish like this. Hey, y'all want to do it? Go right to the website. You can do it. Till next week, that's about it. Right here from Venice, Louisiana. We'll see you. Thanks again, Blair. Buddy. Appreciate it. I enjoyed it. It was awesome. But as Devlin said, you can sure tell the difference between these guys and a Bonita. You think that could do some damage? I was wondering what that was. I was going, man, I know it'll. It's your depth finder saying, tuna, tuna.